You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. And thank you for joining me here today. We're going to get right into today's topic, which is our Training Thursday show, our Training Thursday edition. And it's a great question, so I'm actually turning it into a whole episode. And that question is, how long should your workouts be? So right now, there's obviously a lot of conflicting reports, right? We've heard about the Tabata four-minute workouts, and that's literally just four minutes of straight work. And that's your whole workout then for the day. And then sometimes we're hearing about people do 60-minute workouts or 90-minute workouts. And that's not uncommon either. I know a lot of kind of like Spartan-based athletes and triathletes are training for 90 minutes to two hours. And so we wonder, you know, what's the right program for us? So today, let's break that down. Let's really talk about it. Like, what is best for you? And so to do that, you have to understand what your goal is. So once you understand your goal for anything, that doesn't, it's not just about workouts. Like, what's your goal in terms of, is it weight loss? Is it building muscle? Is it maintaining? Is it, you know, what is that objective? Because then you can also change your nutrition to meet that as well. We'll make that into another show. But you have to have a goal in mind. So If you're an athlete, I think you're going to need a little bit longer of a workout. And that's because you need to train endurance, you need to train power, you need to just train hypertrophy, you're going to need to train some explosive-based movements. Again, that would be with the power. And you're going to need a little bit longer of a workout. And the reason is you also need a longer of a warm-up. Your warm-up might not just be a five-minute warm-up. It might be 10 to 15 minutes of different mobility-based drills to open up the hips and shoulders. So there's a lot that goes into it. Plus, if you're an athlete, that's I think that's pretty much your job, right? So either you're a high school athlete, youth athlete, whatever it might be, and you have more time to dedicate to that. I know in high school, I had a lot more time to dedicate towards sports than obviously I do now, right? So after school, I would spend two, three hours and it would be for training and it would also be for, you know, some type of run, whatever it might be. And that and that was training to be an athlete. So it was very different. Most of us today Obviously, it's a different objective. So let's talk about that in just one moment. The other is you're going to look at how powerlifters train. They train very differently as well. A powerlifter will do just one exercise at a time. Like they'll just do the squat and they'll maybe do I don't know, five sets, 10 sets of a squat. It really depends on what their program is for that day. But they'll also take about five minutes of rest between sets. And they're going to do that. And that's because of something called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And what that means is that that's the energy inside of the muscles that allows them to then lift their maximum weight that next set. And that takes anywhere between three and five minutes to fully recuperate as much as they're going to get. So again, that's a different type of workout as well. And then there's bodybuilders and bodybuilders are going to maybe do supersets, maybe do tri-sets, maybe focus on one body part per day, depending on the bodybuilder. And their workouts are going to be different. And also, if they're using any type of performance-enhancing drugs, we can't compare ourselves to bodybuilders as well because they're going to recuperate faster between workouts and they're going to be able to punish their bodies a little bit more, meaning like lift more weights, break muscle tissue down to a greater extent because they're using steroids to build their bodies back up. So again, we need to focus on you. And and so I'm going to focus on the majority of people who listen to the Cabral Concept and the majority of people that I work with in my Boston practice and online because we work with a lot of people online doing customized programs for them, customizing not only their their wellness or their weight loss uh, through nutrition and through functional medicine lab testing, but also through one-on-one training as well. So let's look at that. So when we're looking at body transformation, most people want to lose some body fat and they want to tone up their muscles, right? And they want overall general good health. They want better energy. So for those workouts, we want those workouts to last about 20 to 45 minutes, and we want those to be most days of the week. So what does that mean? Well, okay, most days of the week is going to be four to five days per week, and I like to look at it this way. Don't ever go more than two days in a row, if you can, without working out. 
So a simple workout routine could look like this. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays is going to be a formal-based workout, and that might be resistance training each of those days, and then a little bit of interval-based work after that. Now, that's as simple as doing an at-home workout with bodyweight exercises, such as uh, push-ups, assisted pull-ups or chin-ups, lunges, squats, step-ups, some band work at home, some kettlebell work at home. I mean, you can do, sky's the limit. You could be working out with a personal trainer, getting a more customized routine for those two or three days a week, or you might be going to the gym on your own and that's okay as well. So those programs are very straightforward. If you're only doing those Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you want to be doing both resistance training and a little bit of interval training as well. I know at our studios in Boston, we have two, that when you're working out with one of our personal trainers, what you're doing is about well, it, to be honest, it's a 45-minute workout, but about five minutes warm-up and about a five-minute either interval at the end, like a Tabata, or it might be five minutes of foam rolling or some type of work, whatever it is that you need. It might be foam rolling, it might be stretching. And so it's really, when you look at it, it's about a 30, 35 minutes of, of intense workout. And we do interval-based training with our resistance. So we're doing both cardio and we're doing weights at once. It's a real, it's a great style of working out, very similar to high-intensity um, training, uh, but with exercises. And we're doing usually two to three exercises at a time, then taking a break and then going back into those uh, for two to three sets of each specific exercise. Works fantastically well. You can see the programs that I I run with those, especially if you're a health professional and you want to see how I I do those as well. Just in the book, A Man's Guide for Muscle and Strength by Human Kinetics and that I publish with them. And again, it's not just for men, but we, we obviously had to niche it and we use it for everyone. So it's, it's for both men and women. So don't shy away from it if you are a woman. And so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, but what about the weekend? Well, the weekend, try to be active. So do something fun. Go for a bike ride with a family or with um, a partner or spouse, whoever it might be. Go, I don't know if anybody rollerblades anymore, but go rollerblading. You know, do something active. Keep yourself active for that 20 to 40 minutes. And I think that'll be great. Beyond walking. Now, every day should be walking. Every day, you should hit your 10,000 steps. Here's why. It is the epitome of health and longevity. Great, great studies on it. But it also, it gets that lymphatic system moving, really, really important. And that's the body's way of kind of draining toxins. So, and the other part of that is 100 minutes, I should say, um, 10,000 steps a day is 100 minutes of walking, which means if you don't do 100 minutes of walking, you've literally been on your feet all day and you haven't even been on your feet for an hour and a half out of the entire 24 hours a day. It's just so important. Now, I think pretty much every cell phone or smartphone now comes with an app that tra- that tracks how much you walk. And so just make sure you hit those 10,000 steps every day of the week. Just so vitally important. If you need to make it more official, go for a walk after lunch and go for a walk after dinner. I have no doubt if you do that, just for 20, 30 minutes each walk, you'll hit your um, steps. And you can take your dog for a walk. If you have a dog, they'll appreciate it as well. Now, if you want my ideal kind of workout week. Here it is. So we have a welcome package online just at stephencabral.com. It's obviously, it's completely free. Um, You can download it and it gives you, you know, my favorite recipes for a smoothie. It gives you my um, ideal workout week. Uh, what I recommend for functional medicine testing. Again, all free information. Highly recommend you check that out if you haven't already. And we'll be make it, making it more easy to access in the future as well. The, the stephencabal.com website is it's a work in progress. We're always looking to make it easier. It is mobile friendly, which means it's responsive. If you check it out online or your cell phone, it's very easy to, to read. But we're going to make it even simpler. So really s- simplify that in the future. All right, so let's get back to what is that ideal workout week? Well, for me, this is what it looks like. If you can give me, say, okay, ideal world, you have seven days a week. What can you give me for the ideal week? Well, it's three days of resistance training and two days of cardio. So it might look something like this. It's going to be Monday workout, uh, meaning with weights, Tuesday cardio, Wednesday, let's say that's an off day, and then Thursday back to weights again. And Friday would be cardio, Saturday would be a little bit of weights, and it might be maybe a little bit of interval training. And so that's five days a week with Wednesdays and Sundays off. And again, this is just 20 to 40 minutes. And on Saturdays when you're home, you can do that right at home. Just get a kettlebell, just one kettlebell, or, or get a chin-up bar and a band to be able to do some assistant chin-ups, you know, or, or just your own body weight. Again, you can get creative. You don't need to spend a lot of money. And why, does it, why do I like you to do an exercise or a workout routine on a Saturday? That's the day, that's the night at least, that most people are going to have their cheat meal, go out and have a couple drinks, whatever it might be. And if you work out the day that you have that cheat meal, your body is then going to use some of those excess carbohydrates and excess sugar and soak that up 
up, instead of turning into body fat, it will store its missing glycogen stores, which just means like your liver needs to replenish. And so do your muscle cells, but some of that sugar. And so it's going to get to actually use that. So they've shown, especially with diabetics, that after eight hours of having a workout, you are better able to uptake a lot of that sugar that your body takes in. So really, really important. So when it comes right down to it, you're looking for more days than not of working out per week. And for me, again, just a simple one is Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays. Just keep it simple. That's three days and then get one more day of being really active. And there you have it. That's four days per week. Now, if you want something more formal, you're going to do three resistance days and two cardio days, or even two resistance, that's the least that I want, and three cardio days if you're more into cardio. Let's say you're, you're more of a maybe triathlete. That's how I would do it as well. So feel free to email or actually the best way is just going to stephencabral.com forward slash ask Cabral. If you have more in-depth questions on this, I'd be happy to answer those on an upcoming Cabral house call. Thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you again for the support. Ever wonder what the best sauna, blue blockers, sleep trackers, wake lights, salt lamps, or other health gadgets are? Or what about the top non-toxic mattresses, sheets, soaps, bath products, toothpaste, and cookware? Or would you like to know the cleanest choices for hemp hearts, meal delivery services, supplements, and much more? I personally curated, researched, and now created a resource page of all of my top picks that continues to grow each week. These are the exact products I use in my own life, with my family, in my private practice, and they're the ones I trust. To find out all of my up-to-date recommendations, and all the details, simply head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash resources.